you know, so my, my journey started, you know, when I was a, a poor kid living in Portland, Oregon, I, I didn't have much money. So I would literally go knock on doors and ask people to, for cans so that I could get the five cent deposit and go buy candy. So I started, you know, hustling at a very early age, which then led into my great grandmother buying me baseball cards and I would go to conventions. I would flip baseball cards. This is back in the, you know, late eighties when Ken Griffey Jr. was a rookie. Welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness and Fulfillment Talk podcast, where we bring to you the most successful, happy, fulfilled gentlemen from around the world who have been able to conquer themselves, their life, their marriage, and their businesses. You will be learning from four dimensional gentlemen who have cracked the code to the science of having it all. The question is, how can married entrepreneurs with kids become gentlemen, achieve true freedom, and build a successful, happy, and fulfilled life, marriage, and business? This show will give you the answer for that. My name is Alex Ramirez, and I'm your host, and you're welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness, Fulfillment Talk podcast. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to another life-changing episode of the, of the Gentleman Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment Talk podcast. Today, I have a very special guest. I'm very excited to... Uh, get to talk to him and get to dive deep into his story and what he's all about. Before I introduce him to you, though, I just want to give a big shout out to all of you who have been doing comments, reviews, likes on all the major podcasting platforms, Apple, Google, Spotify. And to those who have been watching on YouTube as well, thank you very much. And I want to ask you something today. Of course, subscribe, like, comment, right? But I want to ask you that if you get something out of this episode, if you get some value, if you get some feeling, if you get some inspiration to do to go ahead and do something, I want to ask you to please go and share it with one friend since this is how we grow. This is how we share our message. This is how we motivate, inspire, and bless other people to change their lives. And I would really appreciate it. So I know that most people never take the time to do that. Actually, 95% of people never take the time to do that. But the 5% of you who do are, are the ones who say all the difference. And to you and to all of you, I say thank you. So um, today I have Jordan Mendoza. He's the founder and CEO of Blaze Your Own Trail Consulting. And this is with this company, he helps entrepreneurs grow their businesses through strategic marketing, sales, and leadership consulting. And in April of 2019, Jordan created a, started to create content on LinkedIn. He quickly realized the power of organic reach. And by December of that same year, he had amassed a, a following of more than 20,000 followers using a strategy that he now teaches to other people on his 12-week uh, LinkedIn program, which uh, he has a special offer for us today. And uh, I believe, right? Yeah, I think I think I saw it. And yep. since 2019, he's he's been um, Jordan has been created content. He's reached millions of people, and he has over he has thousands, tens of thousands of followers. And now he's a full time trailblazer. Jordan's goal is to help over 100 entrepreneurs grow their brands to increase their impact and income each year. Year. So, Jordan, thank you very much for being here, man. I really appreciate you making time, and uh, you're welcome. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me. And anytime I get to share my story and journey with the hopes to inspire, that's what I'm all about. Cool. So actually, the first thing that I do with my guests, man, is uh, I get them a little bit uncomfortable because it's, it's something a little bit different. And I tell them to introduce, no, not, not introduce, walk us through their entrepreneurial journey in 75 seconds or less. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so my, my journey started you know, when I was a, a poor kid living in Portland, Oregon, I, I didn't have much money. So I would literally go knock on doors and ask people to for cans so that I could get the five cent deposit and go buy candy. So I started, you know, hustling at a very early age, which then led into my great grandmother buying me baseball cards and I would go to conventions. I would flip baseball cards. This is back in the, you know, late eighties when Ken Griffey Jr. was a rookie. You know, this is those years. And then from there in eighth grade, I got my first job selling newspaper subscriptions door to door and that's really where uh, I learned a lot about adversity I learned how to take a hundred no's a day uh, at 14 years old which led me to the next four years hearing over 200,000 no's by the time I turned 22 uh, fast forward from there I uh, actually did every kind of sale you could think of from coupon books to uh, windows to apartments and, and during the time in the apartment industry, I, I really found my passion for teaching and training and coaching. Uh, and that led me to, at 39 years old, uh, blaze my own trail to start my business. Cool, man. That was nice and concise and pretty, pretty, 
Um, well said. So, all righty. So, so from so ever since you were, you were a little kid, you were like, you always had this, this, this hustler, right? This spirit within you. So, um, what do you think was that, man? What, what was that? Yeah. Well, you know, I think that, you know, as human beings, we prefer different modes of communication, right? And we, and we get our energy from different places. So, you know, one of the things when I was getting certified in Myers-Briggs, so Myers-Briggs is like the most widely used personality assessment in the world. MBTI is what most people know it as. So when I was taking my certification, the first thing we learned was about extroverts and introverts, right? Mm -hmm. and, and what is an extrovert? Well, an extrovert is someone that gets their energy from the external world. So they get their energy from being around people. Introverts get their energy from the internal world. So anytime they're around a lot of people, uh, afterwards they want to retreat and they want to kind of be by themselves so they can recharge. So I knew from an early age, I was a high extrovert. I got my energy from speaking, from being around groups of people. I wanted to always be the life of the party. Like, you know, the guy that was in the dance floor making yeah. the circle to break dance. Like that was, that's always been me. And, you know, one of the things that I realized is, you know, when you understand your strengths, and you actually use them consistently over and over again, uh, they, man, they get elevated. And so I've, I've always worked on my communication craft and, you know, really finding out how people are wired, you know, trying to read people's body language. That's something I've been working on ever since I was a kid. Cool. So you, you um, so when, when, when was it that you find out you were an extrovert? I, mean, I could tell from, from a very early age, you know, my mom used to always tell me, she's like, I think you were born and then you just never stop talking, you know, always, <laughs> always speaking, always have something to say. And of course, as a kid in school, that got me in trouble a lot, right? Because mm -hmm. I couldn't stop talking. I'm sure I had ADD. I was undiagnosed, but you know, back when I was in school and I was in elementary school in the eighties, I was just the disruptive kid that would get sent to the principal's office because I, I couldn't stop talking. Well, you fast forward now, I've got a 10 year old, right? We've got five kids, by the way, Alex, I don't know if you knew that, but we've got a 10 year old who it is basically me as a girl at 10 who can't stop talking, but they actually make, uh, you know, advances for, for kids. Now they have beanbag chairs, they have fidget toys, they have different ways to accommodate kids. But when I was in school, it was basically like, you're a troublemaker, here's yeah. a referral. And it's like taking the kid that just needs a different environment and then taking him out of class, that's probably a smart thing to do. Man, um, I forgot to say husband, father, entrepreneur on my on my introduction. I got carried away by your, your amazing introduction. But yeah, yeah, five kids, man. That's, uh, I mean, it's a blessing, man. So, yes. so you were you good at school or like were you oh, like the troublemaker? I was good at I was good at what what I enjoyed, right? Because I could focus more on it. So like PE, I would get A's. Mm. Like drama, I would get A's. You know, there are certain classes I would do well. If I didn't like the class, I lose focus very easily, so I I wouldn't do well. So I was the kid that, you know, had where teachers would say, "And you've got so much potential," but the, you know, again, if if I didn't like something, I was kind of like squirrel, and I would lose focus in it. So yeah. I was, I was not a very great student <laughs> really, but, but I know why now, right? Hindsight's always 20, 20. Once I learned that I'm a more kinesthetic learner, I need to be hands-on. I need to see visual. I need to hear things and I need to touch and feel. That's just kind of how I learn. Now that I know that as an adult, when I started, you know, to get into professional development and teaching and training, I now had that context and I knew that other people may learn like me, but they also may learn like this and they may learn like this. So yeah. it really kind of helped me hone in those skills. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. I, so like I went to school in the, in Mexico and like, they don't give you froze there. They just, uh, I don't know what they used to do, but when I went to school in the, in the U S every single year, man, from like third grade, I, I went to school in the, to the U S in like third grade, uh, never learned how to speak English because I, I'm part border, border town. And like, I would, I lived in Mexico, but went to school in the U S would cross back and forth. And like, I, I never had to speak English and like, I, like I was a really good student from third grade to like eighth grade, like all of those years, I got more than three referrals, man. But it, but it was because I was just bored. Like I, I was good at school, like straight A students on a roll, always like principals, principals list as in you got a straight A's, but always like on like referrals, a bunch of referrals. And I would always get the story of you're a really good student, Alex, but you're always getting into trouble. So uh, 
yeah that was that was me man and and uh something really 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 valuable that i think that i think we can we can talk about for the audience is how you need to know your strength right which is yeah. uh you know you you teach a lot about real estate i mean about leadership i mean and uh knowing your strength is crucial in, in in leadership because you like you as a leader you want to like be focusing on your zone of genius and letting and leading others letting others do their zone of genius and that's how yeah. you like can build big stuff so uh so how, how did you find well you told us how to, how you find your um how how you found your you know your strength but like anyone else out there because like there's always a talk right there's always conversations sure. about you need to focus on your strength um maybe work on your weaknesses but like focus on your strengths and all of that but like how do you find your strength man a lot of people don't know what their unique superpower is yeah so i mean there's there's listen there's a lot of resources out there and so i'd love to give the audience one resource so, so you know write this down if you need to rewind it and get it again do that as well because this assessment is going to help you identify what your top five strengths are and again yeah. alex like you said once we can identify what our strengths are and we can put those to use that elevates us but it also helps see where our weaknesses are mm -hmm. and see where somebody else maybe we can add to our team or add to what we're doing that can kind of fill that gap for us you know and that's part of self-awareness it's understanding that you know we don't need to be able to do everything we just need other people that maybe can help fill that gap so the book is called uh, strength finders 2.0 you can also find it uh, under clifton strengths and um, it's a great book the book itself on the very back page it has a it's kind of like a lottery ticket right you scratch off the code you go to the website you enter that code and then you'll take the assessment it'll take you about you know 20 to 30 minutes you know one some piece of advice i can give you when you're taking it is you know take it in a quiet place you know anytime you're taking any professional development assessments personality assessments emotional intelligence strengths finder you got to make sure that you're in a, a good environment. You don't want to be around a bunch of noise because you want to make sure that you're answering this thing as clear uh, and as honest as you can, right? Mm -hmm. And that's if you want to make sure that you're getting the best results. So take that assessment. It's going to give you your top five strengths. What's really cool is it's you're going to be able to print out this, this little workbook, and it's going to tell you uh, what each of them means. And with that knowledge, you can now say, wow, I didn't realize I had this or I didn't realize that this was my top thing. And then you can invest time and energy into those. And, and man, you're going to see them actually start to take off even more. That's cool, man. And then uh, one really hard thing for entrepreneurs to do is to like let things go, right? Like they want to do everything. And with that awareness of what you're good at, so you can focus on what you're good at and like nobody else can do better than you and then hire out other things uh, and just focus on being a leader. So that's uh that's that's really good i haven't taken a test i actually i've taken the the the, the brick myers test that's how it's called yep. i've taken MBTI. that one yep and then i've taken another one um but like most of like my awareness comes just from trusting myself sure yeah. intuition right yeah. yeah so i'm sure when you took mbti there was you probably had an n in your in your you know four letters because you're intuitive if, if you trust that intuition you know, more than like facts and figures and data, you trust kind of your gut, then you're more of an intuitive type. I don't remember what I got, man. I didn't took it seriously, but I think I got a captain. Like I, I, I picture of like a captain. I, yeah. I, I that's the only thing that I remember. Yeah. Uh, and, and one thing, one thing to note too. So there's, there's a million versions of the assessment out there mm -hmm. and all of them are going to get you, you know, kind of close to who you truly are. But I always suggest you know, take one from, uh, you know, one that's credentialed. So like Myers-Briggs, I would go to the Myers-Briggs Foundation website and take one of theirs. And the reason is, is it's backed by millions and millions of results. Does that make yeah. sense? Mm -hmm. Because anybody like me and you could make an assessment on MBTI based online. on the questions that we want, right? But if only 100 people have taken it, how accurate is the data? Does yeah. that make sense? So I'm, I'm just encouraging like, you know, invest in yourself, right? It's an investment in you. So you might have to spend the 39 bucks or you can get the free one, right? That comes with a picture, you know, a nice little picture that you can get in two seconds, but is it as accurate? So that's the one just thing I would say is, you know, make sure that you are investing in yourself. Investing doesn't always feel good, but it's, but it's always the right thing to do. Yeah, man. So, so, uh, to, you know, to like, piggyback on that like when did you start investing in yourself when, because i mean it's hard something for it's something that's hard for a lot of people to do 
right? And like yeah. an investment in yourself is literally the best investment that you can make more than real estate, more than the stock market, more than NFTs, right? Because uh, like the return on investment is, you know, could, can be infinite. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, when did you start investing in yourself? Man? I, I would say prior to about, you know, nine years ago, I I hadn't read a single book from cover to cover. Damn. And, and, and it surprises a lot of people, but it's true because I didn't see any value in, in reading. But once I got, so, so my property management journey, I literally got into property management with knowing all I knew is I lived in an apartment, you know, like that's what I knew about property management. And I went from leasing professional to assistant manager, to property manager, to managing multi-sites, you know, multi-million dollars in real estate, and then training people for eight years. And that eight years, man, that, that journey is when really professional development started. You know, mm. I, I, you know, my company invested in me and sent me to places, you know, I got certified as an advanced instructor. I got certified in sales enablement in Myers-Briggs. I taught a leadership program. So that's really when it kicked off for me is when I started to, it was part of my responsibility. So of course I said, Hey, well, if I want to have this job, I've got to learn this information. But once I really started diving in, it helped me understand that we're all really the same as humans, right? We all bleed the same color. We all have losses. We all have wins. We all have failures. And it started really uh, helping me to understand and see the value in stories it helped me understand the value of my parents and like the things that they taught me. And so, man, it really helped me take kind of that introspective look at myself. And then I got to see the world through a different lens. That's cool, man. But it sounds to me like you, you still were able to make a lot of progress, right? And, and like move through ranks without personal development. So what do you think was that? Was it like your personality and just your people skills? Yeah. So I, I've always been, like you said earlier, I've been a hustler, man. I've had drive, you know, I, mm. I know, I know how to create influence. Like I think I've, that's one thing. Like if I think back to even being a kid, I'm still friends with all my friends from like you know middle school and elementary and high school. And if I come in town, I can get 15 people to come meet up with me because I've I've kept those relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's actually when I look at emotional intelligence, my highest ranking area is relationship management. Uh, because I, I've always been good at just maintaining relationships and investing in other people and checking on people. I think that's something that's a lost art. You know, so many of us are, are going through life and we've got, you know, buddies we haven't talked to in three years and it shouldn't be that way. You know, we should maintain that level. Even if they don't reach out, someone's got to do it, right? Both of you can't be the knuckleheads that, you know, like the last time you talked, it wasn't, you know, that great of a conversation, but someone's got to show up and someone's got to reach out. All righty, righty. There, I can see oh, you now. Good. Yeah, I lost. I lost you for a second there. You you left in um like both cannot be the knuckleheads. You know, one has to be the one that you know like follows up with each other. That's what you left on. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just saying that you know someone someone has got to be the one that steps up to the plate and and reaches out because you know connection is everything. You know, relationships are everything. Relationships are everything, man. And uh, like that's something that I didn't learn until like. Not, 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 not that long ago. And, um, like one of the most life changing things in my pot in my, in my life has been my podcast and all the, the relationships that I've been creating with it, that I've been building with my podcast. Um, because like, man, like just when you, the easiest way to get success is to put yourself where success can find you. Right. And that's with like other successful yeah. people. And, uh, like the opportunities that I've gotten from surrounding myself with with successful people have been amazing this past couple of months. And that's been just because of my podcast. So yeah, hundred percent. And like, and uh, relationships is, that's what business is all about relationships. Right. And even yeah. sales. So sales, man, is something very crucial with like, with business, right. It's something that business cannot exist without. So yeah. um, you have a like long career with sales. You've gotten a yeah. lot of no's, a lot of rejection. Uh, so can you talk a little bit about that? Oh yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. So so sales, it's all a game, man. It's all about your mindset, you know, and, and an accurate acronym I'd love to share with everybody. I learned this when I was 18 years old and the acronym is uh, PMA equals OPM. And what it stands for is a positive mental attitude equals other people's money. Mm. And if you think about it, if, if have you ever sold anything when you were grumpy, no, 
no, it's not possible, right? Like you don't even get a sympathy sale. You get people like, get the heck away from me because you're grumpy. But have you ever sold anything when you had a great attitude? And now think back to 100%. everything you right. ever sold. How was your attitude? Your attitude? Positive right? mental attitude, man. Yeah, that's it. You got to have it, right? And then again, there's some other ingredients, and this is this is with any type of sale. If you're doing a transactional sale, if you're selling even over the phone, even though they can't hear you know see you, but they can hear your voice inflection. If you are selling real estate, you know, having a smile that should be your first ingredient. You know, maintaining eye contact that should be your second, and then enthusiasm. If you're not excited about what you're selling, there is nobody else is going to be excited about what you're selling. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like having those ingredients, smile, eye contact, enthusiasm, you're going to win more sales. I don't care what you are selling. You know, yeah. you could just be fundraising. You're going to get more fundraising. You could, does that make sense? Like you're going to, it doesn't matter what you do. If you have those and then you also have that positive mental attitude and then you also understand that no equals next opportunity right? Not, not definitive. No. And you can also understand that. How about we go and actually find the no's for our day instead of look for yeses, right? So a lot of it's, you know, how do we get our mind to think in a positive way? Uh, and that comes from, you know, for me, it looked like 200,000 no's before I turned 22. Like if you can hear that many no's that they don't, they don't really affect you that much, right? Because you've, done it and you've experienced it and you've been in it so my advice to everyone is go out and get a lot of dang no's like become a practitioner of hearing no because the more no's that you hear you're gonna un you're gonna get context in a no that'll help you turn the next one into a yes and what i mean by that is there's something called a preemptive strike so like i te taught this a lot in property management if if you're a leasing agent and you you keep hearing people complain about parking Right. Mm -hmm. The fact that you have to pay a parking fee, but you know that every building around you charges a parking fee. When when your new prospect comes in, the first thing you should bring up is parking, no. because what happens if you bring it up first? Guess what? It's, it's not over. an objection anymore. You've literally squashed it. So that's called a preemptive strike. And you can insert that into any type of business. Right. If you're on a sales calls and you consistently are getting it's about money, it's about money. Talk about how you can finance it right off the bat. You know what I'm saying? So if you're getting something consistently, bring it up first and you can never lose. Very valuable, man. And uh, sales starts until you get a no, right? So like, the, you know, the real Bradley. Yeah. So he oh, yeah. talks about, he talks about like how like salespeople. Yeah. Like you're not like, if you're getting yes, you're a salesperson, right? But if you get a no, that's when the closer comes in, right? So he, he, he has a closer school, right? Yep. So the closer doesn't show up until you get a no. And that's when you yep. the closer show up and you've got to like solve problems. And um, so yeah, hundred percent like the sales, actual sales don't start until you get a no. And I love how you framed it up. Like, no, it's just means the next opportunity. Cool. That's it. So, um, so man, um, and, and then the energy, like the positive mental attitude, like I've got, an, I've got a lot of experience with that because like, even after taking like courses, right? Like courses the real, with the Rio Bradley with Jeremy Miner, like, uh, you know, courses, thousands, like thousands of dollars in courses and like for sales and actually getting good at sales and getting the skills at sales. Um, I still found myself not being able to close, not because I didn't know what to say or how to handle objections or whatever, not because not, I didn't have the skill, but because like the, the, the energy wasn't there, like the conviction, the, the confidence, yeah. like I didn't believe in my own product. Right. And like, that's something that can be felt. Did oh, you ever experience 100%. that? Oh man. Like, yeah, you know, I'll give you a perfect example. We, we had this lease up. This is in 2009. A lease up for everyone that might be listening. It's when a brand when a brand new apartment building is built. It's called a lease up in the in the property management world because our goal is we want to lease that thing up, right? We want to lease it as fast as possible. So yep. we had this brand new lease up, and there was this floor plan that I kid you not, Alex. It was almost like the apartment was like shaped like a triangle, <laughs> right? <laughs> and yeah. so I'm in there. I'm like scratching my head, and I'm like no one's going to rent this. Like who wants a, who wants this weird long closet? Like who wants this? Right. What am I doing? I'm like talking myself out of this place already. The so sale, every yeah. person. Yeah. Every person that came and they're like, I'm like, here's the place. Like, you know, my attitude is like, yeah, no one's going to lease this. And guess what? Nobody leased a dang thing. So I had to get creative. I had to go back to the drawing board and look and say, 
you know what? If they hung a TV here and they put a chair here, I could actually see how this could work, right? So I had to go back and reanalyze the situation and say, you know, and figure out how do I make this positive? Because if I'm going in, it's almost like you're swimming and you got a hole in your leg and blood is dripping out, mm. <laughs> right? And you're and you're and there's literally sharks that can smell that. It's the same thing. People can smell when you're not confident. People the can insecurity. smell that. They can literally feel it almost. It's almost like a scent when you are not confident. And guess what? You're never going to sell because they don't. It's not attractive. You know, positivity, enthusiasm, confidence. Those are contagious. Yeah, I mean, I think that was a, like a perfect story to illustrate how you have to sell yourself first. Right? You could. Yeah. You couldn't sell that that thing about apartments the, the triangle shaped apartments until you actually went yourself and started to work on selling yourself first right like you 100%. actually came up with ideas to oh this actually could make it work so now that you believe that it can actually works now that you believe that that product that you're selling could actually benefit someone now you can go out and like start selling and, and it's so um, weird everybody bought it after that you know it's weird crazy right <laughs> and it's you yeah man uh so like yeah. the hardest sale is the selling yourself that's the hardest sale that, that they yeah. like that you will ever have to make the like selling yourself because you know like all entrepreneurs we have our products and stuff but if you're not completely sold on your product it's going to be really hard to like get other people's money and to sell it to some other, to some other people so um so man you you know you, you give a little bit of insight on how to like sell yourself actually like go back to the drawing board and you know like uh flip the negative things into positive things and actually work on how this can actually help other people so, you know, you give a little bit of insight, but like, can you talk a little bit more about how to sell yourself? Yeah. Well, because I, mean, I think, I mean, it, it takes, a, it takes, it takes a, obviously it takes a belief, right? You, you yeah. have to want to be in a different situation, you know, because when, when you're in a, a negative uh, mindset, it's almost like you're looking for the negative things, right? You're looking for the excuse. Oh, you know what? You know, it's a little cold out, so I'm not going to go and you know knock on doors today because it's it's going to be a little uncomfortable, right? You start literally telling yourself. So you know something that was told to me in a sales meeting, and this is like 1999. This is a, this is a while. I was like 18 years old, and the guy goes, he's like, "All right, guys, I'm going to tell you three ingredients that are going to help you be more successful in sales." And he said, "You have to lie, cheat, and steal." Holy shit. <laughs> and, and I'm doing the same. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, I don't want to do that. He's like, listen, there's some days when you just got to lie to yourself and say, you know, I've got a great attitude. You know, like I can go out and sell it. And you got to literally lie to yourself to get yourself pumped up to be able to go and do it. And then he's like, you got to cheat. You got to go listen to your buddies that have been selling and see what's working for them and cheat off of that and write down those insights. Right. Yeah. And then sometimes you got to steal energy from other people. So if you're negative, get around get three positive people, and guess what? Your attitude is going to get elevated, right? It's either, you're either going to get so annoyed that you go back into your doldrums that you're in, or what I see more than likely is you're actually going to get elevated, right? So so you got to lie, cheat, and steal. You got to lie to yourself sometimes. You got to cheat by seeing what's working for other people, and then you've got to steal energy from people that you want to replicate. You know, and I thought it was a, a pretty uh, unique and a really beautiful illustration of, you know, sometimes we just got to figure out ways to get ourselves out of it because staying in it, that's a choice. You know, that, that's yeah. a choice that, that we're making and it does us no good. It, it's going to serve you no purpose to be there. You know, there was a quote, I taught this six month leadership program at my last company and one of the quotes, I think it was actually by buddha it said anger is like uh drinking poison and expecting the other person to die mm. you know and you know when we are unconfident that turns into anger that turns into the that i can't do this and we literally just dig ourselves a deeper hole so with those ingredients that we talked about one of them is changing your environment right if you're upset and you're in your kitchen, take a freaking walk, go outside, you know, get out of the place that where that anger stemmed from. You know, that's super important to be able to do that, but also cheat, which means go connect with somebody else. When you're cheating, you're you're having to be around who? People. Yeah. When we're upset, where we're we usually at? 
by ourselves. So what does that tell you? Mm. You got to get connected with other people. We are meant for connection as humans. Like we literally are meant to connect with people. Uh, and then on the, on the final one, lying to ourselves, it, it's like, hey, you know what? I actually there there's something in me that believes that I can make this change, you know. And if you're having that conversation with yourself, the, there is a way to get out of it. Sorry for the interruption. If you're an aspiring, established coach, course creator, author, and speaker, I want to extend an invitation to check out my free training on the podcast Cloak Track Framework by clicking on the link to the description of this podcast. On this training, you're going to learn how combining podcasting with a rare concept that very few people know about called the Cloak Track can help you build a multi-million dollar network of successful people who can become your clients, put you in front of hundreds of your ideal clients with your message, coaching, courses, and books, help you become a best-selling author, get you booked to speak on stages, or even make an, an extra $237,600 in the next six months. Click on the link of the description of this podcast to learn about the four simple steps to make this work. Step number one is alignment. Aligning who you're trying to be, where you're trying to do, your goals and purpose with building your podcast so that podcasting is a vehicle to help you achieve your goals. Step number two is leveraging the cloak track to find an unlimited supplier of your ideal podcast guest. Step number three is leveraging the cloak track to close an interview with anyone, no matter how rich, famous, or out of your league they may seem. And step number four is the content machine, which is the key to tapping into other people's audiences. These are the four steps to making the podcast cloak track framework work, and I'm not going to hold anything back on this training. So click on the link in the description of this podcast, go and check it out. And once you've done that, if you feel like this would help, we also have a complimentary free, absolutely free alignment call to get you started and show you exactly how to implement everything. Get access to the training right now, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Bye -bye. Yeah. So the light she and steel, man. My favorite one is a, is the lying one because, you know, as, as an entrepreneur, uh, when you're first starting, you are going to have to, to like take action, even if you don't believe yeah. that, you know, the, the, the result you want is going, is like possible for you. Yeah. Right? Like regardless of whether or not you believe go out there and like start taking action and like, it's, it's, it's hard to do, man. So yeah, lie, steal and shield and, and no lie, lie, steal and cheat, light, lie, cheat and steal and steal. <laughs> yeah. It. Yep. So man, um, so you talk a little bit about like leadership and, um, I, I guess it, like I heard in one of in the conversation you had with with a man that uh, like your leadership journey is what uh, led you to start your podcast. So like, what is your podcast about, and like, how did you uh, yeah. come across it? Yeah. So uh, so the podcast. You know, what's crazy when I think about the launch date, I launched the Blaze Your Own Trail podcast on January first of twenty twenty. Right. So everybody think about you know where you were on that date and then of course we all know what happened 90 days later uh, or, or less when the world kind of stood still you know and it was supposed to be two weeks right we all we all remember that part right so i launched this show of course not knowing that there's going to be a global pandemic and the reason why i launched it is you know i grew up in portland oregon i was a big portland trailblazers fan you can see i've got you know clyde the glide drexler behind me here you know he one of my all-time favorite trailblazers growing up and I always had this thing for trailblazers you know people that were innovators they weren't afraid to speak up people like Rosa Parks people like um, you know Lewis and Clark you know these people that went against what culture and society said and they took risks and so I said man like I could combine the love of my favorite sports team and this a trailblazer theme and and the blaze your own trail podcast was born and i knew that i wanted to interview trailblazers you know people that have blazed their own trail and business in life and find out about their journey to success so the ups the downs the failures uh, because that's really truly you know in this conversation i think the most value will be gained from seeing what someone has gone through and where they've been right not just where they are today because they had to go through all of that to get to where they are today yeah and so so then you started interviewing like trailblazers successful people or like what kind of people yeah you yeah so so actually you know the first person on the show was my mentor he's a guy named brian shulman he's the guy in 2019 that that believed in me and he encouraged me to create content on linkedin and and now the rest is history of course there i mean we're uh you know we put out a ton of content but he, you know having him on was obviously he was the trailblazer to me that that uh this guy was born you know a one and a half pound miracle baby uh that and and i know you resonate well with that with someone that was premature and, and shouldn't have lived and 
and and then had to deal with some adversity. So having him on was a great honor to hear his story. I had Heather Monahan on, you know, author, speaker, podcaster herself. Um, people like Dave Meltzer been on the show. Mark Victor Hansen. I've got some former NFL players, and and you know every everyone that's been on, whether you know who they are or not you're going to get value out of every episode because everybody has a journey. Everybody has a story and everybody frankly has value to share with the world. Yeah, a hundred percent. I totally agree, man. Actually a podcast changed my life and uh, the podcast is called millionaire secrets is from Jeff Lerner. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Yeah. I've heard of that. But uh, yeah, you're familiar. Cool. So like the podcast, like, the goal is to like, he interviews millionaires, right? So like I talk about the secrets to becoming a millionaire. And uh, like that podcast changed my life, man. Like every single day I was listening to conversations with like two successful people who have gone through hardships and like now where, where they are. And, you know, it made you realize how they were they, like, they weren't, re they weren't born rich. Like they weren't born with success. Like they had to go through stuff, grow through stuff to be able to get there. So it was, it was really cool. And like, that's one of the things that inspired me uh, to, to start my own podcast. And actually in January 20, in January 1st of 2020, I was going to college. And, uh, awesome. you know, I mentioned how, like before the interview, I mentioned how I was a good student, but like always a troublemaker. Right. And, uh, I actually got a full ride scholarship, man. Like Love for it. some reason I did, like, I was literally high during school <laughs> all the time and I still got a full ride scholarship. So I went to college and thanks to my scholarship, I didn't have to worry about money for like an entire, for like, for like a year and a half. And uh, all of the money that I ever got, I invested into myself. So like in January 1st, like when the COVID thing was happening, everyone left from, from like, uh, from school, right? Like my, my college was like empty and I was the only one there. And I took that as an, as an opportunity to like start my digital marketing agency in the study room of my college. So yeah, I, like I remember it really well. So, uh, yeah, man. So the podcast, so like your podcast, where can we find it? Oh yeah. You can find it everywhere. So if you just Google blaze your own trail podcast, it's on, uh, you know, iTunes, iHeartRadio, it's on TuneIn, uh, Google Podcast, and the best place to get it is our website, which is byotpodcast.com, and then there you'll be able to find you know past and future episodes, and uh, and yeah, definitely check. Love you guys to check it out. Um, give us feedback on the content. You know, we've got a lot of content. Uh, about six episodes that are going to be released over the next handful of weeks. Just got a bunch more edited. So, yeah, it's, it's been a fun journey, man. It's been, you know, two years. We've got listeners now in 68 countries and uh, some sponsors. And, and yeah, I mean, it, podcasting, uh, honestly, has changed my life as well. Just the impact of meeting other people in the community and, and you know, people that I have their phone numbers now that are, that are truly friends that I've made in the space. Uh, there's nothing like it, you know. Man, uh, I had a 10 year goal of speaking in front of hundreds of people. I actually have my vision board here in front of me. And it's like, you know, like a, like a stage and like a guy speaking. Actually, the guy speaking is, is, uh, Bouchard, Brendan Bouchard. And, um, so that's one of the things that I want. And like, and I, I thought that I was going to start doing it in 10 years from now, speaking in front of hundreds of thousands of people at an event. And because of my podcast and surrounding myself with the right people and opportunities, I'm going to achieve that this year crazy right like all uh, because yep. of relationships and um 100%. and then, uh, and but then I also got the action idea. right like action creates yeah. momentum and momentum intention consistency right yeah 100 percent. so action without intention man doesn't mean yep. anything and intention without action is nothing so yep. intention so like I, every single interview i was like intentional about like almost uh it, it's going to sound like a you know like a taker but like I was intentional about going into the interview to see what I want, what I could take, right, and also what I could give, uh, because uh, like I was intentional and uh, you know I, I gave value and because of that I could take, right, and, I, and uh, there was a guy Jefferson Rogers. He, you know, he was doing an event and I offered he needed his speakers and I offered myself and he said yes, right. So now that's happening. So. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it's been a really cool journey. So man, I end my podcast episodes with uh, five questions. I want to make sure that we have some time to go over them. Sure. So can I ask you the first one? Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. So man, if you can, if you could give your 20 year old self some advice, what would you say? Like not redo your life or go back and change things. No, just give your 20 year old self some advice. What would you, what would that be? I would just say it's going to be okay. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's always, so it's always, turns, it always turns out to work. Right. 
Or what would you say yeah. that? Like, yeah, what's been I your mean, experience? Be, because I, I know what I'm 21 years older than that now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I know the journey that I've had to go through to get here. And, and there were times when I didn't feel like it was okay. But so that's the advice I would give. And because I think it would take pressure off of myself, my future self. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, if, if, if people are able to like really internalize what you're saying and really like understand, I think it's, it, it, it lifts the yeah. weight off you. Oh, right? 100%. Because- it's, it's like, taking that elephant that's sitting on your shoulders and just tell, saying that it doesn't exist anymore, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And like all those stories, all those fears, just realize that they're made up. Yeah. hundred percent. So the second question is around mindset. What is one mindset shift that you've had that you can share with us that has allowed you to get to where you are right now in your life? Man, it, it was a quote that I heard and actually I heard it. Um, and so I thought I had my mindset dialed in, but just hearing it impacted me so much that I, I want to share it with as many people. And that is that the inner game controls the outer game. And I mean, yeah, and that's exactly how I felt when I heard it because it just put everything into such easy and deep perspective. Uh, can you uh, m- maybe dig a little bit, go a little bit, dive a little bit deeper into that, man? Yeah, I, I would love so to. Like, so, yeah, if mean? we can, if we can control the battle, you know, in between our two ears, right? And uh, again, because we we dictate uh, obviously our our thoughts uh, as well as our actions. So if we can figure out how to calm that noise and and turn you know the narrative and change that narrative into a positive narrative uh, and have a more optimistic outlook, even in even in times of trouble. Uh, man, that that's the big unlock, right? Because the inner game truly is going to control our output, our outer game, the way that we show up with our family, the way that we show up in the world. Um, yeah. So getting getting that dialed in, man, that's it controls everything. Yeah, man, I, I love that, man. And like, uh, it was. I'm glad I learned that from the beginning. Like, it all it's all just a big mind game, right? It's all in here, uh, and your inner world. Your outer world, you know, like the money, your health, your relationships is just a direct reflection of your inner world, right? So like what's going on inside, that's what's, that's what's affecting, that's what's, um, that's what's, yeah, that's what's affecting the, whatever's going on on the outside. So if you don't like what's going on on the outside, the money that you're making, that your business, your relationship. going on the inside. Exactly. Yep. But man, one key thing here is that the outside of the outer world, so like, let's say money, right? Money is a lagging indicator. So it's so it's not like so like a lot of people think that they'll start working out, they'll start eating healthy, they'll start, you know, like I don't know, taking dates or having spending more time with their kids when they're successful, right? Yeah. Or 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 they think that they'll be happy when they're successful. Or but no, like it doesn't work. Like it's it's the reverse, right? Like you gotta take care of yourself, you gotta eat healthy, you gotta work out, you have to like have connection, you have to be happy in order to be successful. So like happy so like um su- like how can i say this success so, so, how can i say this man so being successful being a successful person is what will make you success will, will make you successful having success will not give you make you successful i don't know if that made sense yeah but uh are you like do you know what i'm trying to say yeah i know, I know what you're saying no can I, you help I, me I a little bit get it. <laughs> yeah so so basically what, what you're saying is that you know most of us were try to work on the external factors before we work on the internal factors, right? Which is on us. Like, so if you're truly working in on you, like you talk a lot about the, your morning routine, right? Like you get your day started, your, your, you know, what that looks like for me is like, you know, uh, prayer and meditation first and then spending time with my wife and then spending time with my kids and then going into the work, right? And when you have your foundations in order and you can do that on a consistent basis because uh, right, you're investing in you because again, listen, folks, it's all an investment. If we want to talk about business, you got to invest money to make money. If you want to talk about life, you got to invest in you to become a better version of you. So if you're not spending that time and working on that inner game, uh, it's going to reflect in the outer game. You know, when you've got things more dialed in, and that doesn't mean you're perfect because no, none of us are. We are imperfect people on an imperfect planet. And we are going to make mistakes every day, day, multiple times a day. It's just inevitable. So, but once you understand that and you can give yourself a little bit of grace, 
you know, and give your instead of beating yourself up, just say, hey, you know, I made that mistake. Let's move forward because too many of us are living in the past. Too yeah. many of us are living in 2020. Too many of us are living in, you know, 1990. And you got to wake up and you got to realize that once you can actually forgive you, forgive yourself and forgive others, you can actually start to, to move that needle forward. Mm, but it, also, it, it starts with you. It starts yeah. with you. 100%. Awesome. And thank you. Thank you for, for, for the help. So let's see. Mindset map. So clarity, man. Um, you know, a lot of people are lacking clarity in their lives, clarity on like who they are, what they want, where they're going, how they're going to get there. Uh, uh, leadership, you know, it stems a lot from clarity, from being clear yeah. on like your strengths, being clear on your weaknesses, um, being clear like on the vision that you're trying to lead people on. So, so like, do you have any, any like, I don't know, strategy, tactic, tool, any advice for people who may want for, to help people gain more clarity in their life? Yeah, I mean, you know, what what worked for me is by understanding that there there's someone a lot bigger than me that's in control, you know, and for me that that just stems back to my faith, you know, I'm a believer in in God and Jesus Christ and 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 the reason why for me if I look back to all the things that happened in my life and we didn't even really touch on them but just to give people kind of the cliff notes version, you know, grow up in a broken home with an abusive stepdad with a mom that had one lung that was on oxygen super poor in fourth grade stung by 53 bees probably should have died right at 12 i was beaten and falsely arrested by police it uh, could have fought back and, and gotten killed for that at 19 i was in a near fatal accident rolled several times uh, north of 70 miles an hour was told i wouldn't walk again so you know if i look back at my life and before i turned 20 years old you see God all over the place. You see, you know, the the off-duty EMTs that happen to be coming down the highway that happen to get us to the hospital. You know, you see teachers in action trying to get bees off of me. You see a store clerk yelling at the police so that they don't do something that they might regret. So like, you know, I look and look back at my life and and there's only one explanation for that and that's a higher power that uh and so my role in life is to try to be a blessing to other people by sharing my insights and my context so in hopes that they can get inspired through what I've been through because I'm living proof that no matter where you come from no matter what you've been through uh, you can always you can still have a smile you can still be positive your life can still be good but you've got to take action and you've got to be invested in you to want to go blaze your trail and that's what I'm on a mission now is helping people do that that's awesome, man. Yeah, hundred percent. I've had I've had experience with that as well, and it ties back to, uh, to the first uh, piece of advice that you gave. You know, on the first question, which was, "It's all going to be good." There's there's someone out there, there's something out there, that loves you, right? Yep. Cool. <clears throat> Mindset map motion. So, what is one habit, man, that you have? I think you alluded to it a little bit earlier. What is what is the one habit that you think has allowed you has, uh, taken you, has allowed you to get to where you are right now in your life? Uh, well, definitely taking chances, you know, showing up like that's that's always the first hardest step of the battle is by showing up on the field. You know, too many too many people that are listening to this have been sitting on the bench for way too long, you know, to use the sports analogy. And you've been sitting there and you've been comfortable. And yeah, maybe you move the needle a little bit. You know, maybe you feel you've made a little bit of an impact. But I'm, I want to just tell you right now, you are meant for greater. There are bigger things that you can do. And the moment that you understand that uh, and you actually put some intentionality and, and action into motion, you're going to create momentum, which is going to create consistency, which is going to create habits, which are going to turn into results. Mm. Uh, and you're going to look at your life like I, like I have over the past handful of years and say, man, why didn't I see this sooner? And I know why I didn't because it was all part of the journey. And when you can understand that the journey is everything, right? Then, then you'll—that's really where the unlock starts to happen. Is you need to go through what you need. Everything I've gone through, all my experiences, I had to go through them to get to where I am today. Because I wouldn't be able to be on this, having this conversation and sharing the insights that I've extracted through the lessons. Yeah. Oh, that, that was awesome, man. And uh. Uh, so like, you're meant for greater. I so one of the things that keeps people back from really stepping into their actual potential, man, is just themselves. That inner game that we're talking about, right? Like 
we'll, we will never, you will never outperform the opinion that you have about yourself. And yeah. man, one of the, one of the biggest impacts that having my podcast has had on me is just my change in my identity, my change in my, in my, like how I view myself and my beliefs, right? Because like, I've been talking to dozens and dozens of ultra successful people. And I realized that like all of them have gone through a lot of struggles. Like they, 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 they didn't all of a sudden appeared and they were perfect and they put their pants one leg at a time as well. 100%. So pretty cool. So man, the last question is around measure and tracking. So what do you take on that? Oh man, I, I think tracking is everything. You know, one of the things that my agency helps with is systems and processes for businesses. Um, you know, because without systems and processes, it's impossible to track, you know, right? What, what are you tracking on? You're tracking on your phone and, you know, and so I, I talk to a lot of business owners every week and, you know, the biggest problems that most people seem to have is they've got too many places that they're logging into. They've got a Calendly account, they've got a Linktree, they've got a MailChimp, they're going to all these places. And, and so what I say to them is, you know, what if you had a one place that you logged into? And so that's what we really try to do is, give people those systems and processes because then you can truly measure data mm. and and if you have a business uh, data is everything you want to know why a customer said yes but more importantly why they said no you also need to know where that traffic source came from you also need to know if if something's converting and if it's not converting um so you know i would say that it's everything <laughs> you know you you got to keep track awesome. life, life is a contact sport but it it's also uh, like you should be measuring because you you should have goals and a vision of, of where you want to be. You shouldn't be comfortable being in the same place yesterday as you are today. I love it, man. Um, so, man, that's it. Thank you very much. Go in and, and give Jordan Mendoza a follow. We're going to have your links, uh, you know, like everywhere where this appears, man. But, uh, you know, like if, if people want to know more about you, what you do, um, you know, your podcast, the, 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 the content that you put out on LinkedIn, um, is there any like special place that they can go and find you? You oh, also yeah. mentioned, uh, yeah, about, yeah. Like, I'm the, the creating, LinkedIn. yeah, we're putting out a lot of content. So LinkedIn's a great place. You can search for me. Uh, I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, all at Jordan J Mendoza. Okay. Um, I've, I've got a verified account on TikTok as well. So if you guys have questions on how to grow on that platform, but most importantly, uh, if you've listened to this and you've got value out of it, out of it, and, and maybe, you're like, you know what, I feel like I need to show up more. I feel like I pe more people need to know who I am. If if that's you, if, if you want to build a brand and build an authority, um, if you send me on Instagram, so just at Jordan J. Mendoza, DM me the word blaze. Uh, I've got a coaching program. It's 12 weeks. We literally will, uh, we take people from optimizing their profile to how to monetize it. And, and a, a bigger part of it is storytelling. So because uh, you have a story, I've got a story, we all have stories, and, and sometimes we don't see value in our own, but uh, if you want to work with me, I'll actually teach you how to extract your story uh, and, and turn it into a more powerful thing than you probably think it could ever be, um, because if you've ever lost, you've got a story. If you've ever won, you've got a story. If you've ever experienced losing a loved one, you've got a story. If you've been through a hardship, uh, someone needs to hear that, because there's there's billions of people on the planet and uh, all of us are individually unique there's only one of us out there and there's somebody out there that needs what you have awesome and thanks for that so we're gonna have all that information on the description of <clears throat> where this appears another thing man a podcast changed my life a podcast changed your life right and uh th just there's going to be a special link just for the jordan mendoza ep uh, mendoza episode also in the description of this of this video for anyone who wants to start launch grow and out monetize and automate a podcast right so that they can start interviewing people that they want to be like or or um you know or high high level people that helps them high, uh, level up so that, that i'm going to include that in there as as well just for the jordan jordan mendoza pod uh, episode and uh thank you very much for being here man i really really enjoyed this yeah. and um it was a pleasure yeah, it was my honor to be here, and, and I hope at least one person gets value, and, and my job's done. Thanks, man. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching the Gentleman Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment Talk podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with one friend, leave us a comment, and let us know. 99% of people never leave a review or comment, but we love and are very thankful with the 1% of you who do. 
If there's something or someone you want to see on this podcast, send me a message on Instagram at Alex underscore Ramirez and 20 and let me know. I say thank you for that. I have an amazing surprise for each and every one of you who does take the time to leave us a comment or review on YouTube or one of the major podcasting platforms 